our advice is to make friends to followers of all religions and to work to build stronger community where accommodates all followers of religions respecting their faiths. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the merciful, the beneficent. Always we teach our friends and our audience that all divine religions, because they are ambassadors to convey the message from the Almighty Creator to humanity, all reflect and relate to one source of wisdom and every logical guidance coming from God. So to us, whether it is Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Jacob, Noah, or any other prophet, when we compare them to the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon all of them, we stick to one Quranic reference which says that no one is allowed to differentiate between God's prophets and messengers because to accept some and reject others is against the faith of Islam. Based on that, my experience of many conferences which I attended for the interfaith and intrafaith within UK, Europe or even in the Middle East, uh, I found that some sort of peaceful understanding and harmonious debate is essential in expressing the basic faiths in Islam and all other divine religions. In other words, I always enjoyed this friendship, this harmonious debate and the peaceful coexistence in a sense that all are belonging to one creator and the humanity all is one community which is expressed in the Quran that the humanity all, everybody as a human being is member of one community. In a letter from Imam Ali, the first Imam of the Shias, according to all Muslims other than Shias, uh, he is considered and counted as the fourth rightly guided caliph. Of course, the Shias, to whom we, uh, I mean, at Al Quay Center and all our Shia communities in UK and all over the world, I mean, uh, we pay highest respect to the sayings of Imam Ali. Imam Ali says in his letter to his governor to Egypt that people either are your brethren in faith or they are created by the same creator who created you. So in origin, you are the same. In this way, I refer to one Persian poet called Saadi from Shiraz, who says, Bani Adam azaya yekdi garant, which means that human being and humankind are all organs and members of one body. So I enjoyed that and I always see that this is the good thing to do when you meet followers of other religions. My experience since 1971, when I was teaching religions and comparative studies about religion at the University of Ferdowsi in Mashhad, Iran, and later on in Damascus and Beirut, and for the last 30 years here in London, that we have in our syllabus, in our modules for teachings, the comparative study about our religions. Why? Because people, when they lack knowledge about others, they have some imaginary ideas about them. Those imaginary ideas are clear when you know them and you can't know them without meeting with them and discussing everything with that. 
I have two uh, experiences which are very, very good and I consider them useful. That for the last two years, I contributed to a summer course in Oxford, and that is Christ Muslim Christian uh, course uh, run by some colleagues there, where the students are half Muslims, half Christians, some to be ordained as priests uh, for the future. And we had a very good course for the whole week. Uh, myself lecturing about Islam and some professors lecturing about Christianity and seeing the similarities or differences. At least we know one another and we refer to the original sources on both sides. The other opportunity was that we had one day uh, the uh, uh, a seminar for rabbis and imams uh, in London and this was, I think, in 2007 or 8, uh, when a full day, a complete day, was attended by 48 Imams and Rabbis. 24 were uh, Rabbis, half liberal, half orthodox, and the Muslims majority were Sunnis, and few Shias were there. Uh, I think I was the only uh, cleric who was Shia there. And we discussed everything in a very clear way. So, when you meet people who belong to our faiths and have different ideas and you learn from them directly, you know them and once you knew them, you have a better idea about it. There is again a saying from Imam Ali that he says that people are reacting in some sort of enmity towards what they are ignorant about. So it is very, very important to know one another, to discuss with them, provided that it is based on some sort of logical and reasonable debate. The whole creation of God Almighty is based on differences. We have verses in the Qur'an to tell us about the variety of herbs, vegetations, and visages, races, tribes, and even cultures. So, this means that in no way it should be something to divide, rather something to bring people together. In the Qur'an we find this and all our scholars try to elaborate on this idea and this principle. That is, all regardless of the races, backgrounds, tribes, cultures, even we can see that whatever they used to have uh, as uh, traditional way and customary uh, practices, uh, they keep that particularity for themselves. But when we come to others, recognizing the other and not eliminating them in a sense that, okay, everything is for me and no one else shares with me the salvation, for example, this is not something acceptable in my understanding, in my experience. So, this means that, for example, if someone believes in Jesus being Son of God according to what he was taught about it, and me as a Muslim, I say no. In Islam, Jesus is a respected messenger of God, highly admired in the Quran. His mother Mary is, I mean, there is one full chapter in the Quran about Mary, about the immaculate, immaculate conception of Jesus. So, this shouldn't be a barrier between building some sort of peaceful, peaceful coexistence with others. And I gave only this example to say that in the Quran again, there is one chapter to say that to you, your faith and your religion, and to me, my religion and my faith. So, we never challenge others, why are you Christian or Jew or, I mean, following whatever, I mean, other faith you believe in. So, each one can stick to their understanding 
provided that it is based on something logical, reasonable, and scientific, all right? And this in no way allows us to, I mean, separate ourselves or isolate ourselves. Let me tell you about one example from the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that once he was sitting with his companions and there was a funeral of a Jewish person. And whilst they were passing him through, he stood up as a sign of respect. So his companions, or a few of his companions said, Oh, messenger of God, this is not a Muslim. He said, but isn't he a human being? So to give value for a person as being a human being, a member of humankind and human society, above whatever denomination or faith or sect or what understanding they have, that is something which helps a lot in building a harmonious society. According to my experience, when there was a bombing on a, a church in Peshawar, we arranged for a gathering here at the Hoi Foundation. We called many priests, Christians, then many rabbis, Buddhists, and uh, some faithless even people, Sunnis and Shias. And we prayed together and we condemned the atrocities done to the houses of uh, devotion and the house of God. When people do their service to God, communicate with their Lord, regardless of their faith. In another occasion, it was something to, uh, it was a picket by the Westminster Abbey and when all, again, representatives of uh, different religions, Muslims, Christians, Jews, Buddhists, and they were gathered there with the Archbishop of Canterbury. And we had a very nice picture there, and picket was continued for approximately an hour and a half. When the Ezidis and the Christians and the Sabians in Mosul were attacked by Daesh, and we condemned that. So uh, we prayed together for the safety of believers, whoever they are. Uh, sharing the prayer, attending the churches sometimes, and even two weeks ago, we had our students at the schools adjacent to us, Asadiq and Zahra School, where we have 440 students from uh, year one of primary school until GCSE. Uh, and they shared, they went to a synagogue to have a shared uh, discussion and prayer and communication. Yes, uh, interfaith, uh, gathering, I mean, pickets, and celebrating certain festives. Let me tell you that uh, in the last three years, during the month of Ramadan, when uh, it is the time for fasting for all Muslims, uh, the ninth month in the calendar, uh, the month of Ramadan. And we throw a party, we call it Iftar party here at Al Khoi Center. We invite their uh, Christians, Jews, Buddhists, and uh, parts from the uh, people representing the police. Uh, and even uh, we have some MPs, the mayor, or some other uh, dignitaries, authorities, all together, some 500 people, and all the neighbors, of course, all the neighbors, yeah. We invite them for the feast of Iftar. And uh, some 12 or 14 people speak, each one for five minutes, before having the uh, breaking the fast for us and for those who are not fasting, having uh, dinner together. So, yes, there are a variety of activities uh, through which one can uh, prove and indicate his loyalty and his love to the other faith and to other communities.